At Staples Business Advantage, our team of experts can help you find the break room products to satisfy everyone's preferences, while AI can suggest popular items, monitor stock levels, optimize pricing, and automate reordering. AI can do a lot of things, but I can never know the taste of a truly great cup of coffee. Sigh. But you also can't get hangry. This is true. At Staples Business Advantage, we help you select from 2,000 break room products, so you can be sure there's something for everyone. Yum. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. This is a Stocks for Beginners quick tip. Essential lessons. Questions answered. Valuations, safety and timing. These are the three pillars of successful investing according to Todd Schaeffer, manager of research at Vectorvest. In this quick tip... He talks about price action, risk, and searching for value. Value is one of the three aspects we look for when we're deciding what stocks to buy, right? So we want to find, and it depends on your your temperament and your objectives, of course, but broadly, we want to find stocks that are financially performing well, and we want to pay a fair price for them, right? So this idea of valuation is one that we work with every day. So we calculate an intrinsic value for every stock in our database every day. So that lets the investor know what is this stock worth. We also look at that valuation though relative to a AAA corporate bond investment so you know whether or not the stock should outperform that bond. And that's kind of our benchmark if you will. So we want to favor particularly if we in, we're investing, you want to favor undervalued stocks. And stocks whose future valuation is predicted to rise. Nothing's guaranteed, of course, but we look particularly to earnings growth rate and historical earnings growth as precursors for future financial performance. Beyond the the question of valuation, then you say, well, okay, I I have a stock that has great double-digit earnings growth here. So it fits nicely into the growth stock category, but how much risk am I taking on In that stock, because for instance, there are a lot of uh, biomeds right now, right? They're marijuana stocks. There are a lot of growth stocks that don't have financial track records, right? And they don't have a history of consistent financial performance. Those kinds of stocks typically go up fast, but they also have more volatility in them. So you have to answer that question, right? It's, It's the other side of the coin of, okay, for that upside potential, how much risk am I willing to take on? So we... Hmm analyze the consistency and predictability of the company's financial performance over time to give the investor an idea or measurement of how consistent that financial performance is. So if I'm a if I'm a trader, right, I'm just I'm mm-hmm. swing trading, fundamentals aren't as critical to me, and so I might pay more attention to that growth number. But if I'm an investor, then certainly that consistent performance is important to me, particularly if I'm looking for any kind of income from the investment. So I'm going to favor stocks that have those good safety scores. And a more prudent person would look for a balance of both. So, Todd, with the earnings growth, that's just basically the amount of earnings, the amount of money that the company is making. Is that correct? Can we just dig deep into what that figure is? We need to think about earnings from both a historical and a future basis. Mm -hmm. So companies can have, and we want companies to have, consistent earnings performance over time historically, right? You have a track record of performance of not missing and not wildly gyrating earnings performance, right? We're, we're giving the, the premium or, you know, we're valuing the consistent performance, Mm -hmm. but we also need to think about the future, right? Because you can look at, I'm trying to think of, of companies that were industry leaders, Kodak, Bosch and Lom, right? Yep. You can be a leader in the field, but your future prospects not looking that good. So you, we have to look at and consider the future prospects for the company's earnings performance in conjunction with that historical performance. So if I have a company who's been consistently performing on an earnings basis and their forecast mm. to continue that, that's the that's the magic combination, right? That's the sweet spot of what I'm looking for. Yep. So then with safety, you were referring before to some of those biotech stocks and cannabis stocks and that are are moving pretty wildly. This is where your measure of safety would come in? That's right. So our safety Mm. analysis looks not only at the financial performance of the company, but also the price action, how volatile is that price action. So there are 
are quite a few measurements that go into the algorithm to form the analysis. But ultimately, we're pursuing this notion that companies that consistently perform financially are driving their future value. That transaction or that that arrangement is what drives consistently steady price action. All things being equal, 30,000 foot view, yes, we recognize that stocks are are bandied about by the market action. But in the long haul, if you're looking for sustainable or sustained uptrends in the price action, look for companies that have sustained uptrends in their earnings action. They correlate. Can you give us a definition of price action, please? My simple one would be price trend over time, right? So trends mm-hmm. are defined by the the duration, their duration. So you have short-term trends, intermediate trends, long-term trends. Right? So our, our starting point is we look for one-year performance just to see that it's been consistently going. If I graphed it, it would go bottom left, upper right. And I like to say the smoother, the better, right? Mm-hmm. The more consistently it goes up the page, the more I like it, the more robust it is, and the better my probabilities of sustained price action. And this is on a chart. I mean, people have seen the charts yes. that show where the price of a stock has been in the past. Um, is there a particular kind of chart that you refer to? Well, in the... In the VectorVest system, mm. some of these, in, for instance, our earnings analysis is proprietary. But you can right. still go to public sourced information and you can look at a price chart over a year. You can look over mm. at least the historical earnings performance over the past year. And you could look for earnings forecasts provided by those same sources for at least you know the next year, the next mm-hmm. four quarters. And you can start putting together a pretty good list of candidates. And then it's simply a matter of looking at their charts for that consistent price action. I really like teaching folks how to uh, analyze stocks by looking at their charts. The numbers tell Mm. you things, sure, but we're visual beings. We're very good at at recognizing patterns and smoothing lines. And after you've looked at a couple charts, then you can start recognizing that pattern. And I'm not looking at candlestick analysis or technical indicators, just as the price steadily plotting from bottom left to upper right, without a lot of big swings, right? Mm. It's, the, it's the big swings that give you the heartburn that throw you back into the emotional zone and you're panicking because a stock that was up 20% last month is down 30% this month and you've just seen a 50% swing in that position and you're scared to death. Even though if you looked at that one-year chart, you'd say, well, it's done this four or five times already, <laughs> right? It's not doing anything abnormal for the stock. Mm. It just I didn't recognize that that's the kind of stock I was I was buying. A um a friend of mine has always said that the only trend that he pays attention to is the one that he can see from across the room when he's sitting way back from the computer and he looks at the chart, and that trend is the one that stands out to him. Yeah, thanks for that because I really should complete that idea. Right, so we start yeah. with that one year chart. But mm-hmm. we want to look at multiple time frames because there, as I said, there's short, intermediate, and long term trends. So typically, yeah. we'll start at the one year. If I like what I see there, I'll back out to the five year or even the ten year if you really want to. But five year is pretty good; it stays within this economy, right? So then I'll also look at the time at the shorter time frame, right? So if I if I like the one in the five year patterns, then let's go into the shorter time frame. Let's go into six months and see, let's look at the hard right edge. Is the price still hitting higher highs and higher lows? Is it still trending higher? If you have a, a stock that's been consistently doing that and is still doing that, then that the odds are coming into your favor. You have a stock now, a company that has a, historic, or a history of financial performance. The market recognizes that performance and it's continuing to demand it or want it by virtue of the higher price action. If you found this podcast helpful, please tell a friend, especially if it's someone who needs to start thinking about investing for their future. You'll be helping them and helping me to keep this show on the road. Stocks for Beginners is for information and educational purposes only. It isn't financial advice and you shouldn't buy or sell any investments based on what you've heard here. Any opinion or commentary is the view of the speaker only, not Stocks for Beginners. This podcast doesn't replace professional advice regarding your personal financial needs, circumstances or current situation. And thank you for listening to my podcast. Over four decades, Aberdeen has built deep relationships throughout emerging market economies. 
And each episode of our Emerging Markets Equity podcast is your chance to eavesdrop on an agenda-setting conversation between me, Nick Robinson, and some of our brightest minds, figuring out the opportunities in key emerging markets. Search for the Emerging Markets Equity podcast from Aberdeen. That's A-B-R-D-N, wherever you get your podcasts.